Hi everyone, welcome back into the classroom. I'm just kind of loosening up my uh, three-quarter inch brush here. I left a little bit of paint in it, but uh, anyway, I'll clean that up. Welcome back to the classroom. We're going to paint the chaffinch. Now, I had a um, request from Judy to do the chaffinch, and so I thought, well, you know, it's been a while since I've done the chaffinch, and so I think we're going to do that today. More of that in a second. But I had to show you this. And uh, I just completed this one, filming this one, and um, it's really kind of a, it's really a lot of fun, and, and you think you're, you're stepping back into history. What I mean is, um, many years ago, I was 2007, I was over in Paris, I was knighted by the French government for my work in the arts, in preserving the arts. And so I was over there for the ceremony and stuff, and afterwards, I got privileges that I thought I'd never have and one of them was I was able to go down into the archives of the Louvre, the big Louvre Museum there in Paris and uh, so I went underneath there and there was a bunch of artists that I wanted to have information on from the golden age all the way up through the 19th century and so there there they were, they were all there all archived and I was able to look through the archives and, and everything and spent some time studying and I wrote down Many different artists that I wanted to learn that I wanted to learn from that taught in the uh, both the uh, uh, English Royal Academy and the French Royal Academies in the in the seventeenth, eighteenth, and nineteenth centuries. And anyway, one of them I'd written down was this English um, landscape painter, and it was fantastic. And this is a, a sketch; it's actually an oil sketch of things he did. He did a lot of these, and. Uh, and he used white to show where the lights were, really the highlights and stuff were, in it, and he was quite known for that. And so what I'm doing in one of my online classes is in the S202 uh, Art of Seeing class, teaching them how to see. How did all these different artists see? See, you know, these things and create their own work. We take the sketches. Now, he never painted this sketch. Uh, this one was done in um, 1856, and he never painted it. But uh, where I took it here and it did an hour and a half quick little wash painting into his idea and then how I would go about painting the landscape today. It's a lot of fun. It really is. And you're thinking, wow, you know, I mean, he, he did this work and this brush work and you see this thing, you know, over 160 years ago. It's, it's just amazing, you know, that was an artist 160 years ago that did that. And I just find that fascinating and so a lot of people are always like you know where you get your ideas from and everything well I study a lot of the old I look at a lot of the old masters and I try to figure out and put myself in their shoes and what they thought about and what they did I'm not a formally trained uh, artist I never took art in school or anything like that I just you know I've self-studied but I've had a lot of opportunities to study it some fantastic stuff so anyway this is in a class I just had so much fun with it but part of that fun was the idea that you're recreating something that was done 160 years ago that that artist never painted but you kind of got right where he was when he did that sketch. It was really a, kind of neat. But we're going to paint the chaffinch today, okay? So we'll get into that. Enough of the talk, I'm sorry. Um, we'll get into the chaffinch here. This is one. This is a photo that I purchased from Adobe Stock uh, Photos. I like to do that with Adobe. I, you know, I always make sure that the copyrights and everything on every photo that I use. So, And a lot of times I just purchase them and... and um, the, you know, we have a business account with Adobe, and of course they provide this stuff for our video editing and stuff. And so we get, uh, uh, you know, I, I like to use their photos. So anyway, I sketched him up here. What are these right here? Well, they, I'm thinking, another photo, these are yellow knockout roses. And um, I'm thinking maybe some yellow knockout roses. But I also love... And I just grabbed some of the books. I love these. I painted these daisies. I don't know when I did this for, but uh, I did it in... Um, these are the numbering system. When you see this numbering system that's on here, so I can always look at the painting and uh, tell exactly when I did it. And this one was done in March of this year. It was my 115th painting of the year. So it was done in March of 20. 
um, and 150 painting, and of course there's a copyright of it. But I like like this color and these splashes of color and different colors back behind that. So I grabbed this little board and I kind of set this stuff out and around me here as in, not, not to copy, but influences, color influences, stroke, calligraphy. I like the calligraphy. I mean, look at that wild calligraphy I used on these daisies here. And there's texture there. This hasn't been varnished yet, so the colors. You know, haven't come up, can't uh, haven't come up and come alive. But if we put a a little bit of var a little bit of extender on here, you can see how these colors just come alive here, like this. And uh, yeah, I I kind of like that real rough calligraphy there. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe I need to uh, have that out right here to help me influence. Okay. Anyway, all right. I know I'm talking a lot. Let's get into the painting of it. Okay. So the chaffins. Oh. One more thing, sorry. I uh, I brought this painting down. This sits up in our living room here at the uh, at the art center, because this uh, at the art center here is also a residence and stuff. So this is out of the living room. This is a male and female chaffinch that I painted, uh, 2016. Yeah, so it was, I painted and see by that numbering system, this is in August. I painted in August of 2016. It was my 275th painting of the year that year. So. I painted this, and I kind of like this too with the lost, and but I used a palette knife in here to push in some of the backgrounds and stuff to give a, uh, a you know a different look, you know, to the painting here. We'll set that up right there. Cover. Hopefully that won't fall over, <laughs> and then I'll take it back upstairs to the living room area upstairs and uh, onto the second floor when I'm done. Hopefully I'll remember that. All right, so this is the chaffinch. This is the photo that I got of it, the male chaffinch here. Put that in. We'll set that here as a reference. My colors, same one. The only one that's different is I put out sapphire here, blue. And uh, sapphire blue is the blue that I used on that landscape into that water. It's my go-to blue as a nice intermediate blue. Um, it is, it's a mixed color. It's not a pure pigment like a thalo blue which is Thalo Blue's 15 colon 3. Uh, Sapphire is a mixture of Thalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Black and White. So it's a, uh, it's a blue leaning blue violet and it's a, a kind of toned just a little bit. But it's my go-to blue for quick and easy things here. Uh, and so, you know, if you don't have a sapphire, you could just take Thalo and a little bit of, a little bit of violet and some white, um, gray it, with a tiny bit of yellow or a tiny bit of red, and you can and you can get a a, a pretty close uh, you know color to it. But this is my Hansa, my Darulite, my yellow oxide, my uh, naphthol red light, pine green, burnt sienna, my sapphire, thalo blue, um, the cornacridone violet, red violet, and white. Those are my go-to colors. I have a little bit of extender out here and a cap right up here. I put it out into a little cup. So I might touch it from here, you know, every once in a while. I'm going to go start to loosen up my background here first. And uh, just going to take some extender. And I want to, I, I love that. I think some of those violet colors off of those da daisies would look really nice. And we'll put some violets and blues here and some lights. And if we get a little bit, uh, you know, wild, just a bit with some of this push some of that color back through here. I think just might, you know, push some of this this color here. And, you know, the violet, you know, why, why violet too? Well, violet, if I'm going to do those yellow knockout roses, violet is a, you know, is the complement of it. So that would work really nice. So we'll push some violets in there. Let's, um, you know, thinking right along, I want to push some of the uh, chaffinch colors, which is going to have a lot of orange-based colors, burnt siennas and stuff colors. So I might push some of that into this. This is very, this is what I love to paint. Now, the impressionism of it. So I like to just put down color, color movement, color marks here. Soften it with a paper towel. I have a little bit of extender in there so it doesn't dry on me too fast, but I like those edges out of there. If you like that, uh, you know, like the one I did with the male and female, the, the pairs, I painted a whole series of birds and I called the pairs and uh, painted them in pairs. And, I, you know, 
you can palette knife in some of that blue. A little touch of that blue would be nice. You know, it's almost like the hint of the sky, a little sapphire here in white. And since, let's create that St. Andrew's cross right here with that. So we'll push some of that right through. We'll let some of this dirty brush come right out here, just like that. So you'll see a little bit of dirty brush. Now, this is a big board that I have here. This is a 18 by 11. And uh, so I made it a little bigger today. Um, and... Uh, you know, it's like I, oh, I I always tend to do that a little bit. Uh, I'm a terrible, terrible for encroaching on my on my uh, negative space and not leaving it up. So sometimes I'll go a bit bigger board and then trim it down when it's done to uh, maybe the size that I want. You know, uh, let's toss in, believe it or not, a little yellow. This will be background. We're thinking the yellow knockouts. How this. Is this burnt sienna right here moving over to some of this yellow put just a touch of extender into that might be nice some of the yellows kicking back up and through here so you get this beautiful colors going through that's what I like and to see some of that running through here boom let's get a bit more powerful I like that burnt sienna strike right down through there and uh, I, I, it's just the, Im the impressionism of it I really like. I've been doing that a lot. It sells very well for me as a, as a, you know, in the galleries and stuff. So that works. There we go. Wow, that's, uh, that's some color. Now, again, like we said, we could calm anything down, push, you know, blue. You can, you know, if you find too much of this competes against the chaffinch, uh, you can push some of it back a little bit later. But, you know, the chaffinch has, I mean, you can develop a lot of contrast within the chaffinch itself because it can have a lot of colors in him. Um, and, he, you know, you can put a lot of contrast into that, that grays of the head and the, and the oranges and stuff of his body. Okay, we'll bring him over here so we can look at that. We'll choose, I think I'm going to do him more painterly if I want to do this this painting um, really quite, uh, bring out my birding brushes, which is my small flats and my number four round. Um, but if I want to, um, you know, do him uh, more impressionistic with all of this impressionism that I have going around here, I'm going to want to, um, you know, I'm thinking you got to, you've got to paint him a little bit more painterly. And so we'll do that. And I'm going to start, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll start to work him up Premier Coup, which is the technique, which is one of my favorite ones, which is we start with some of our darks, our darker colors here. And um, since he's not a real glowy bird like the, uh, um, like the uh, uh, Cardinal was and stuff, we can, we can paint him just a little different. So we're going to go a little more Premier Coup. So I'm going to come back here and look for some of those darks. And I might, you know, take artist license here to actually uh, maybe brighten some areas and, and uh, put in a little bit more contrast than what this photo shows. Um, might just do that like I'm doing right now. Just a little bit more color. And I like those lost little edges. And stuff here so yeah and that that's another thing um, you know some of you that are watching maybe watching this video for the first you don't see everything I do I use my hands when I paint but this paint is non-toxic this isn't a non-toxic acrylic there's nothing toxic anywhere in it the company that manufactures my form it's my formula I was a chemist behind this um, and so there's nothing toxic in it. As a matter of fact, the company that manufactured this completely environmentally uh, green company. They they don't pollute. They don't do anything. They don't manufacture any uh, not any toxic product whatsoever. So if you're going to use your hands, make sure that the paint and stuff that you use is completely non-toxic. And uh, I recommend that. So always do that. Let's go back into this. Let's put some of this. Right up and around here, we'll leave a space for his eye, for his eye ring. Use just a corner of the brush. I want to use some, so a lot of calligraphy. I want to use some power strokes here. 
that are going to give some nice powerful movement. But I want to use some calligraphy on these strokes here. Um, and so they give the direction of what it is. Now, there's a nice brighter little bit of an orange and some yellowy orange up there. So let's take this burnt sienna off to the side. Let's go pump it up a bit orange with some uh, Hansa yellow and a touch of the Napsol red light. Add just a bit of that and we'll push that more. Could have a touch more red. I like to do what I call model color. So I kind of over mix that a bit on the palette there. So I like the colors to model to where they don't mix up real well. That's where you get the prettiest, to me, the prettiest toning to the to the birds and you know more interest to the birds. Let's put some of that orange up underneath here. Look for some of that. We'll pull down, forming some of his off of his neck into his breast area here. Pulling down like that. So the calligraphy is going that way. The calligraphy is pulling down that way, and you get this nice. You get some of that movement, and he's got a lot of feather movement there that we want to bring out, right? Let's take some of this orange and let's push it right in through here. This is my number four round, so I mean my number four flat, so you don't get too many strokes, but see it. Uh, and so what I do is I use it on the chisel, I'll use it on the flat, I'll use the corner. You know, uh, those of you who have watched my videos quite a lot, you know I, I love John Singer Sargent. He is what's given me the ability to be more impressionistic at what it is. And one of the things he said is always paint with as large a brush as possible. Now, see, even underneath that blue, I see just a touch, a hint of some of that orange and stuff. So I'm going to put it in there and hopefully I'll remember to keep it there. Let's put a little burnt sienna into that and pull some right down here on his mantle feathers here. Down like that. Pull some of that down. We'll put some blues and stuff in there as well. But we want this to dry up because if I put those kind of blue grays in there, they're almost a complement and they'll be very hard to set on top of each other. So I'll let them, I'll let them gray out, a, I'll let them dry out a bit. One reason why I like the acrylics, I liked it to dry out a bit. See, that's where I work that color so you can get that movement. That's what I want. You don't want to do it too much because it all becomes the same. We do want to have a bit of that movement. Let's take some yellow oxide, dirty brush. We'll push in that yellowy band right there. It's got to go a bit lighter, so a touch of Hansa, a bit of white. Let's just pull some down like that. Just push the color a bit. Leave that because it's. I know it's bigger and it's out of out of the area. But I really like the movement of it, and that's what I paint for. And sometimes the movement doesn't match your original, and it's best to just leave it, you know. Just just go ahead and leave it. I like that movement that's in there. Let's take some of that light. We'll go down here to his primaries, and we'll just push some of that in. We'll gray this down, a little bit of blue into this. Gray this down, a little bit of your blue gray, a little burnt sienna that makes beautiful grays. And we'll come down here a little bit more blue. Down by the base of his tail, drop some color right down in there. That's pretty good. Let's take a bit of that blue grayed into the little bit of extender here, grayed into this uh, Burnt Sienna and just a little bit of color. So I've got a lot of movement and color in there. Now we have an undertone and a lighter tone and I get in Premier Coup I do the undertone first so you've got this darker almost a violety blue here. So let's just take I'm going to use some of my go-to blue as well. Thalo blue and sapphire blue. We'll add a bit of red violet to it. Now we're going to gray it up with some burnt sienna and that's going to take us real close probably a little bit more violet here and let's just go ahead and just use the calligraphy of the brush here to just put on the outside shape see so my brush is going that way out 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 it's going to go up and you can look and you can see that pulling of that hair this way so we want to that helps flatten out the top of his head there too 
He's a finch. He's got a little bit flatter head at the top. So we'll pull out just a bit like that. And then I'm going to use this as an undertone right in here, right into some of that area. Maybe pull that. Oh, I do like using a finger. If you don't like using a finger, just use a small brush. It's okay. Just use a small brush. Um, I rinse some of that heavy color out because I want to use it kind of thin, maybe a little bit lighter, a little bit of my blue into it here. And uh, I want to come down and just pull a bit of that through right up here. Now this is dry now, so see that color can sit up on top of it, see? Give you a nice look. So if it's wet, it would blend in really easy and become even more gray. But since it's dry, I don't have to worry about it. It's not mixing in with that orange. Got a deeper burnt sienna. I'm going to take some burnt sienna, a little bit of my blue here. That makes a deeper burnt sienna color right down, right down in here before we get to those whites. So I'm just going to push that on. Push that into that color. Mine could be a bit more burnt sienna. It's just a bit. So we'll just stroke through that with just a touch more burnt sienna. Leave some of that blue. See, that's that movement that just gives that just gives life and energy to your bird. So try not to try not to work too hard with it. It's it's figuring out what colors. And so, you know, like what I when I'm doing with you here is see is I'm following the general guidelines of Premier Coup. So it Premier Coup that technique is telling me which colors, you know, I don't I don't need to do like I can, let me put it that way, I can go through and do all the darker tones like we did earlier in a bird. Or since the chaffinch has blues and oranges in different areas, I can work them differently. But I start that same color progression from dark to light. That's the premier coup. Generally, you work all your tones and stuff. But sometimes I get excited in an area and just go work it and it doesn't hurt anyway it's more it's more along the lines of david premier coup that's a version of it i'm going to take a little burnt sienna a little bit of that dark we'll come right up front here and push that nice dark right in there into the front of his of his beak area there that nice tone right in there there's going to be some lights in there let's take some of this now and just lighten it up here Get a little bit of this gray, lighter tone. Let's go ahead and just push that right into the beak, the whole beak, even though we'll do a different color in just a minute. But let's push that right into the whole beak there for right now. And uh, yeah, that works. Boy, that color that I have there, that blue burnt sienna and that violet in there, is a good color for the lights coming in here as well up on top of his head here and I'll take a shorter stroke with it and just kind of pick it up a bit and you know if we wanted to do more of a feathery look you know you could use that the smaller uh, round brush you know that we used before and push in there um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with this one here for a bit because this is the painterly look that I like as well and it doesn't do as much as the individual feathers as it much as it, it paints an area. And I do like that as well. So it's got that. I'm going to push this little cap right up here. It's a little easier to grab it right. And I grab just a little bit of it. I like it. it I don't use it for blending because you see I'm not blending anything. I'm pushing stuff around. Those colors are not blended. They're pushed around. They're what I call incorporated. Um... You know, and I, I had that one question from a person that said, you know, what, but you're blending. I'm, no, I'm not blending. Blending is, blending, let's say this, okay? Blending, let me show you the, the difference here. So here's red and yellow. What I do is I incorporate. I'll push one in, pull one down, push and pull. So I get a, a traveling of the tones in and out of each other like this, okay? 
So you get this mottly look to the color. That's what I'm pushing with my finger. Blending is when you go back and forth several times and now you've made your orange. That's blending, but it doesn't have any movement, see? All of the birds and everything that I paint with, I do what I call model and I push with my finger and I don't blend. I don't even use the word blend because if you use the word blend, you'll overpaint it, okay? You'll overpaint it, and I don't like to do that. I like to keep it modeled so I have more interest in everything that I do. Okay, so this is my number four is painting most of this. I could go down to my number two here, which is a, just a little bit thinner. And let's push, let's get this a little bit more violet here. Let's push uh, just a little more color in there. A little lighter here, a little lighter. We'll build it several times here. A little light to the low side there. I like to take some of his head colors and stuff like that, some of the darker colors, tap that right in at the beginning of the beak, model that in. You get those mottled colors right there. So it gives you a nice, what I feel is a nicer look. I'm going to take some burnt sienna and some blue right here on the edge of this little number two and drop a shadow into his beak. Okay, and then I'll come back, work the lights again. His beak is, you know, they, he has a large beak and it's very looks very rounded and so sometimes I will work their beak quite a bit now well like this one here where he's looking at you you see I work that beak quite a bit with a lot of tones a lot of colors um, and you know sometimes I do sometimes sometimes I don't sometimes I do it a little bit more uh, simplistic it all depends on what I feel about the the bird that day really you know, and, and uh, start reading because, you know, your flowers, your other elements of your design are what's going to allow you to work the bird a little bit more. You know, so kind of like that. I'll start to, but you can see his beak is quite a bit lighter. And after a while, what happens is you build up a lot of color here and it's hard to get the next light in. And so I just, since I'm acrylic, I just let it dry up a bit. I'll let it, uh, I'll restate that top shadow there, and then I'm gonna let that dry up again and revisit that beak in just a few minutes after it dries up a bit here. But that's kind of a nice light gray color. We can use on a few accent areas here. Pulling out, down, a few little accent lights here. That's kind of nice, I like that violet and the siennas and all that kind of modeled up together there. I'm using my little number two now just on the little chisel and uh, now if I want this to be more painterly even though you see a lot of little movement there what I'll do with the bird is I'll take a more powerful stroke and in more of a paint you know more of a, a mark I mean a, a nice a nice stroke and what that does is, and I'll set it back with some dark here too, but that gives you more of a brush movement. And so rather than, you know, you have different ways. You have like little liner brush you can go in and work and all that's going to be part of your signature of your technique as an artist. And I really do love the painterly look where I do like Sargent does, you know, and that's where you take a, a bigger, bolder stroke. And so, you know, he always says, try to work the area which is with as few strokes and as large a strokes as possible. Okay. Now my color is not as violet and I could make it violet here as I'm putting that in. I can make that just a bit more violet but I do like that kind of gray in there as well. But you can touch, you can just come back and add little touches of the violet and you can go back and forth. You can take some of that darker color, pull that back in that way, there, to break up some of that, uh, some of that other color. Do like that 
phthalo, a little bit of violet, and some burnt sienna. Such a pretty little color. Nice little undertoning color here. Pull through. That's nice. Yeah, now I'm going to take a stroke or two of that, I think, still down through here, just a bit darker. A little more sienna. There. I still try to paint the birds kind of fast, but, uh, you know, it's like a chaffinch here. He has a lot of color, a lot of broken areas of color, and I do like to kind of capture those. Let's pull down. Now, see, that's dry down there, so now I can just pull down and lift off here. A little too much water. See how I didn't lift off real well? I had a little too much water in my brush. Not hard, just push it back up like that. Diminish the color. Let's drag it out on the palette here for a second. Get rid of that water so we get it. Now see it lifts up better. It gives you more of a sharing of the paint here. So there. And I'll probably build that a couple times here. I want to even grab that little bit of light that he sees, like a little light stroke coming down that way, picking up there. See, I like that modeling of color coming through. And don't get yourself wrapped up in, and it's easy to get wrapped up in so much little details on him that, you know, he'll start to become stiff if you start doing it too much. So, we, um, Use a little bit of restraint. Let's go to our lighter orange. This is dry here, so we get to make it again. Or you can add water to it and just reconstitute it. Sometimes I just mix it again. I don't mind mixing it again because I'll mix a slightly different color. And that's what I'm trying for. And so let's put a little more yellow into this. Let's go start working up some lighter tones. A bit of the light stroke through. See, that's the brush like that I like. And I'd leave that. I would leave that. And um, maybe pick up just a bit more light. Maybe over towards my orange. So it's not quite as yellow. A little different color. Not just lighter. It's a little different. I like that. And let's just push a bit of that. Now that might be too light. So we'll go down just a touch. Just push a little bit of that in and out there see that's the movement that I like and I don't worry about hitting exactly his colors you know I'm, I'm just emulating him here I'm gonna raise up a little more burnt sienna and orange raise up that eye there just a bit that's pretty good that's a nice tone I'm gonna put a bit of burnt sienna that orange here Let's pull down here just a bit with that. So you get that other tone in there. Through here just a bit. I just kind of scan real quickly through to see some other areas that I might see that tone there. And uh, so he's a little bit more yellow and stuff up there uh, on that one there. I could push some orange down to take a bit of that away. But I kind of like that. I like the stroke and stuff, so I'm going to leave him just a little bit more yellow. It's okay. I can do that. I'm going to go a little lighter orange. We'll start to come down his body here. Lift. See, it's a dragging kind of stroke, so there's not much moisture in the paint. It's kind of dry here. Okay, But it's got a little extender in it, so it slides over the surface. I like how extender slides over the surface. We'll build those colors there just a bit. Now, he goes, his actual colors go just a touch lighter violet over the edge here. So we should probably push some of that in there. So real light violet. Boy, there's a little fly that got in again. Here we go. And... Yeah, my, some of you have seen my labs that are here, the girls that are here with me all the time, and they figured out how to open up that back door on the other side there and go out into the yard. But they haven't figured out how to shut the door, so they may have opened the door. And, you know, it's hot outside. It's in the high 90s, and uh, they may have opened the door and got out and let a fly in. Don't I have to check that? 
So we'll just model that and keep that going. See, I like that kind of, and you start to get that look right in there with that. You know, so some shorter little, shorter little marks. Change the color. Don't paint too long with the same color. If you go too light, just come back the other way. Um, let's take a bit of that orange with this. Let's just push some of that going this way here. Get some of that calligraphy going that way. See, that's why I like to use my finger just to push that in. Now, see, that's not blending it. That is, I'm pushing the colors together. I'm incorporating it. I'm not blending it. Uh, blending would make another color. I don't. I'm pushing the colors in there so you can still see the color movement in there. That's what I want. That's what I like. So I don't do it too much here. And uh, we'll come down here. Let's grab some more of this burnt sienna kind of color right in here. A bit of extender. Let's just pull down just a bit. Right down, set that. See, I like that movement. I like a bit of this to round up his the, his shoulder there. That's good. I really like that dark up here. We'll push that into the point there just a bit more. There. Yeah. So you see, I like all that modeling. Now, down low here, burnt sienna, some blues. That'll gray that right on down. Let's put just a touch of extender into that and let's just gray down push that a bit not too much gray that down darken that down there bit of the lights come down over that edge we need to have a bit darker down in there and I pushed up into my orange there just a bit so I'll take some of that out it needs to be a touch darker but uh, that'll do for right now. Go with this lighter, kind of an orangey color. Push in a bit. I better go give him an eye and stuff so I can start talking to him here before we go into his wings and stuff. But I also want to put in some, um, some nice strokes, uh, you know, a heavier mark. And let me show you. This is what I mean by the painterly. So I'll push in a heavier mark, uh, you know, of paint and sometimes textures and stuff like that that leave more of a, a mark of the paint. And so instead of having a whole bunch of tiny little feathers and stuff, I give him more power with uh, these. And I might just lighten that up a bit. It'll dry a bit darker, but... There, so see that's more that's more of the painterly look where you get a the brush marks themselves, and I try to follow his contours. I'll leave some of that. Let's go give him an eye. I'll use my favorite way. You should know now. I I put some burnt sienna in. Oh boy, that was a big old drop of water came right out there, flooded his eye. Got to remember when I rinse that brush to pinch it off to get rid of that excess water. Let's take a darker violet here. Blue and violet. Push that in. Right in there like that. Boom. That's, that's pretty good. He has a... Uh, Lighter eye ring. I'm just going to sneak up here. Boy, that didn't clean up quite enough. Get rid of that water. Has a lighter eye ring here. And so let's drop that around. And again, I always put it in too big. So I'll put the eye ring in too big and I paint it into position. I'm going to go a little more burnt sienna on the top. Here. Lighter eye ring there. A little darker, burnt sienna, a bit of blue. Let's go right to the front of the eye there, tap in that little bit of dark right there. Let's take a bit more of our orange, push and paint up right up into that eye ring and take some back. Really nice there. Has a 
bit more light to the back side back here. So you can make the eye ring smaller with the outside color, like I do here. Boom, paint into it. Or the eye itself. You can pull some color into the eye itself. Now there's a nice little light catch light. I don't want to use real light white, so I'm going to take it off with a bit of orange. Just a corner of the brush. It'll probably be too big, and then I'll take it down. So I always take it down with the eye color. Push, just lightly push up into it until I get that catch light right about what I want it to be. But, you know, for a quick little bird painting like this, you know, these techniques work pretty well for giving you a bit of realism to it, you know. And if I took more time, you know, you could get it really quite real. Let's take a little bit of that, those colors and push into his beak now. See, his beak is nice and dry, so it's easy to hue shift and work some of these colors in and get some more interest in there. Why I just love acrylics this way. You know, you, you, you have to use the right techniques, but boy, howdy, it just works really well letting that dry up. I used to fight that with oils all the time. i put a color on and then it would disappear and and uh, now I don't. I just let it dry up a bit. Let's put a bit more light right up on the top up there. Tap it a bit so we get some interest into that beak as well. A bit more blue. Lighter blue to the bottom right here. Right up there like that. Here we go. Now I do like it. Like that other chaffinch I did, I do like it a bit more painterly, so I'm going to skip a little lighter value right through. So in other words, I'm going to loosen it up a bit with some other color here, so it doesn't look quite so smooth. You know, move some, move some other colors through it here. I don't like the smooth. That's better. You know, tap a little bit, use your chisel and tap a bit here. Push some of that color in. Let's reset that color up at the top there, like that. And um, maybe just a bit more down here. Sometimes just running your finger like that through it does it for me too. And put a bit of that sienna there. I like that color. That's better right there. It gets a bit more interest to them there. But see, that's the painterly stroke that I really like. And I might just put a few more in. You do that by leaving your brush, the paint a little thicker, a little drier, and you leave more of the stroke. And that gives that nice painterly look to them. And let's put some in there. Let's come right up through here. Push some down through there. I like that. I'll work that light over that again. Push that in. Nice colors, nice colors to them there. Bit more of that orange, maybe a bit of darty light here so it changes. Here, let's just put a light, light little bit of it. We don't, and just push that in to incorporate some of it. And he has just a touch more of a red. We can just do that too, because we know how. Just gotta push that color in. Right in there. That's pretty good. That gives a nice coloring to him. All right, let's get those blacks and those whites and get some of those darker colors into him. And I do need to get, let's just do that first. Let's get this yellow, excuse me, the blue. Back up here, a bit of violet. I want to get that light gray on him. Not exactly the same color as I did before. Back up a little bit higher, right up there on the top of his head. Got a little flattened out, but 
maybe a bit more light as a bit of a light source too there push some of that through that painterly look there some of that through and well, I'm gonna have to uh, find where the dogs let that little fly in here I tell you then we'll put some up here onto his shoulder right up there see that's it see you get that nice look that way all right let's go darker violets okay so maybe some burnt sienna a bit of green a bit of blue all of that together makes that nice it's a nice dark that'll go with a lot of things okay so we're pulling that band down we're gonna have that darker band right in here pull and set down and lift off here I have a different darker mark of it pulling down that goes right down towards the end of that wing there. I'm going to let some of it just kind of fracture off here a bit too. Put a touch of extender in it. I like it to slide a bit as I, as I put in the mark. That little edge of that feather there. And we can use this for the definition here. Now you know, like I said before, I usually don't get too defined here on the primary flight feathers like you'd see here because I find that it's beautiful, but it can be distracting in an impressionistic way, you know, if you're doing a lot of impressionism. So I tend to soften them out or blur them out, blur some of those colors out together. Now this pulls in, we'll have to set the light back in, right in there, they almost, they join up just a bit to the front of the wing here, like that, that's good. Some nice pulls of, uh, let's just blur that whole back edge back there, like that. Some, uh, and I wanna grab some of that, I wanna, I want to get a little more interest to that yellow. So I'm going to rinse my brush there, grab some yellow and some white. Let's just pull down a couple times. And he, now see, it's the underneath there is dry. Hit it with your finger, see, and you get a good, a nice look, a nice movement. That's what I look for is this movement. We just pull down real heavy with the brush. Just pull down. And... So you get a nice movement mark there. That's what I'm looking for. And then you can come back in and set a little lighter. You know, he has, if you want to get really, he has a, you know, really detailed. He has a little bit more light, like right in there. Just stab it, pull it back a bit. Use your dark if you get too much. Let's pick up a little more white. Right up here, he has a little white mark. And we'll just use the edge. There, let's put that a little heavier. Let's just put a little mark. I like to paint those on the chaffinch. There. Push that mark a bit more. You can sink it back down with some of that sienna, like pull right down. Get that other color in there. That's kind of kind of neat. There, there we go. Could go a little bit white. I played there just a touch too much. A bit more white. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So let's go get just a bit of that light, kind of violet. Let's get just a bit of that, more of that. Here. I like those violety colors on the tape inch. And let's put some of that lighter violet back up in here again. Through there. Puts his colors in there. So like I say, I, I do like to uh, put some little touch of violet up in there. I do like those uh, to take these colors, stuff of the chaffinch, and it sometimes, you know, bring them out a little bit more than what they actually have on the real bird, just so that I get a touch more uh, contrast to them, especially if I'm going to do these yellow 
uh, knock out roses here probably. I need it. Let's go a little lighter. Pull, pull and lift off. Just slide it off. That's the, and let the brush, let the softness of the brush do its job. There, as we get a little bit of feathering in there. Let's use that, maybe a bit of orange and stuff with that. Or some light feathering here, up over the wing. You can, so I've done a lot of this with my four and my two flat. You could use the other one, you know, like I showed you before. You could use the number four round and do that. It's your bird. You can do whatever. I like to paint different looks to them, use different uh, tools and stuff. Let's uh, take some of this down here into his tail. We're going to let most of this tail kind of disappear back here. So we'll just push some color in there. And I'll let most of that disappear. Now I do have to go back up my bigger brush. I do have to get a bit more of a shadow on him here. And I do want to have a bit bigger cheek. Let me go with the smaller one here first for a second. Get some more orange. Lighter orange. Just a bit of that sienna in there to keep it getting too bright. And let's build this more painterly cheek stroke right up there. That's a little bit better. I could have a touch of burnt sienna running around the, out, the edge of his eye there. Just touch and lift off. Try to leave it kind of painterly. And now his head feels a little bit smaller right here because I'm missing this downstroke. So you see this, I have this in there, but I don't have this downstroke right here where the feathers are going right over the top of his mantle right here. See that? And that keeps his head looking just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take some lighter, slightly different colors. Go a little more blue and light and we'll come right down pulling down this way so that color connects to his head. Now let's just restate some darker colors as well. Right in there. See back and forth on those just a bit. Maybe now touch lighter, touch different. Get a nice curvature here. There and that makes his head, see how it makes his head feel better, uh, bigger? Because that's a color that's carried into his head. So we'll come down. Just add that in like that. There, that works. It's better. I still want to get some um, light, almost orange. I have a lot of violet in there. So let's go back over to the orange. Light right in there. Lighter than what is actually there, but it's okay, because the yellow roses will, he needs, he's gonna need that to help him with the yellow roses and stuff. So I'm a little bit lighter, but that's okay, I think. So, a bit of the orange back through here. I just, you know, when you paint the birds and in, in you know, it's yours, it, and how many times you go through with this, like with these colorings, and look at this time going through, just how much more interest that gives his body. And if you take the time to do that, you know, it all depends, you know, painting time, you know, it's is it all depends, and take the time to do that. I mean, you just add so much, so much to your bird, but, you know, it's for me, it's, and a lot of you, are, and I'm mentoring some people that uh, right now that want to become professional artists, and, you know, how do you go about doing that? And, you know, it's for me, everything that I do, how I price my paintings, how I do everything, is all off of time. How much time? We have a certain amount of studio time uh, that runs here now, you know, and it gets quite expensive, and it's um, between my business that's out in Pennsylvania and my business that's here, 
my expenses are seven hundred dollars a day to keep the doors open on those on those two businesses and it all comes from my painting so everything that I price how I price my paintings how I do everything there is all based on that um, and based on time there's some people that base it on you know square inches of the canvas and everything which is great you know I can set a foundation like that and then come back but for me it's time and so how much time goes into a painting and then how much energy I put into that painting uh, to how much I think I can sell that painting for. Um, that's just uh, that's just all part of the uh, you know the uh, um, the pricing of it that you have to go through. Anyway, there's a lot of different things. I'm gonna use my four round here just and just clean up that point of his beak just a bit here and push that in. Just a bit more detail. So I didn't use this brush really at all in the painting of him but see you can and see that starts to add just a little bit more detail to him it's not that you can't it's sometimes I like to uh, and you know and to put a, a little bit of a shine and I'm just a little bit of a shine there's a little white and the orange right up in the front of that eye ring that gives him a little bit more life sometimes it's not as as uh, realistic but it is it's real fun. Now he does have some light little that you don't normally put on when you're doing uh, painterly looks, but eh, we're doing some of this light little feathering right up through there. And uh, let's take a little dark and I hit that corner of the eye. I want to push that back up there like that. So makes him a, a bit more... Uh, a bit more colorful there, like that. I'm going to go with a slightly bigger, slightly bigger brush here, like a six, and uh, gray down. I'm going to take some of these, just gray this down, and uh, push some of that right down into his tail here. Here's some of that coloring into that. I'm going to let his tail really fade off this time. Let's take some burnt sienna. He's going to have some burnt sienna, should have a burnt sienna leg there, maybe the edge of another one right there. Now we go into the fun part of those flowers. Well, actually, let me put push just a touch of toned kind of yellow edge right back there, band. Pick that up on the other side of him there. You know, and that's, a, that's the other thing is time. How much time do you take and putting in all that last little bits of detail there? You know, so... And I was going to take some of this dark here and come right back down to this body shadow down here on the lower part of him there. Push that in again. Maybe just a touch more sienna into that blue right down in here. Just push a bit, not too much so that they blend. You just want to incorporate them. We don't blend, we incorporate the colors. Don't push them until they make another color. Just kind of, I always kind of, the way I describe it a lot in classes is you're, you're kind of marbleizing the bird just a bit. You know, how marble swirls around. That's kind of what you do. I'm just going to loosen up that chest feather area there. Maybe a light orange. Oh, that I like that. Sometimes that bigger brush, you know, Sergeant, and that's why he's the master. You know, he knows what he's talking about. Using that big brush just to grab that interest. Yeah, okay. That's a pretty good looking bird for the chaffinch. Nice, colorful bird. Now we'll go in and... Uh, Let's uh, paint 10 minute blossoms here. Let's take some yellow oxide and uh, we're going to kind of set up. I'm going to use that 6 and regret that. That's going to 10, an 8 or a 10 paints it better. I'm going with my 10 here. And let's just kind of read some of this. That rose will go that way. 
this we want another row so I, I kind of visualize it round kind of an oval here we're turning them here block Man, these are knockout roses so and we can open some way up here and then you can also close them down to uh, you know more of the bud shapes and stuff that they have here so they don't need to always be open you can push in some bud shapes here as well so let's do that we'll just push some color down through here just act like you know what you're doing push some color around here okay let's take some red and sienna sienna and red let's push that right into the centers now and I'll, I'll use that color a little bit more. Why? Because it's in the chaffinch. And this is carrying the chaffinch's colors over to these guys. Here, let's use this on some of the outside parts of that little rose. I mean, I like that. So I may add another little one or so right over there. Maybe something over here. We'll push that over. blur that out a bit I like the blur painting it goes fast makes it look like you did a lot but it's actually goes very fast let's get some lighter yellows and I'm going to clean that blue off of this area here so it doesn't get in my way nice thing about the heritage you can just dry there for, for, for a couple hours you can just reconstitute it with water like this and just clean it right off clean that right off there We'll go back into some brighter colors here. Pick up some light and we'll start to shape some of the outside petals pulling in. These are older knockouts, so they're more opened up here. So we'll open them up a bit. See that nice bright color is going to compete against that chaffinch, what, kind of what I wanted here light color here we can pull down to kind of set this petal that way maybe a petal coming in so you kind of imagine the bowl well you got to imagine the bowl boom right there so that's where the bowl's going to be these are the other petals coming out I'm going to paint these very loose and quick this very impressionistic so I get this movement of, of color that's what I like in here, being those. And so I paint them fast and very loose. I don't mix up the color very well here, and I push it in and out like that and use my finger to push a bit. Um, change the color, get a little lighter, a little more white. Mix that up just a bit. Let's just pull that around like that. We're going to paint them very impressionistic here. Push them around in a little bit more light. Now, and if they get too heavy for you, and this is something that you think about, and I, mine aren't, not yet, but they start to get too heavy feeling for you, take some of your blue colors and stuff and go right over them and soften them down. That's a very impressionistic, soft thing to do. It's wonderful. Works wonderful. There we go. Let's just push a bit of that light out there, like that. Let's go work on this one over here. A little more, maybe a bit of orange into that too, down here, so it's not quite the same here. Push that around. And we'll add a bit of the light. Always kind of pulling those petals in towards where that bowl. This is going to be my bowl. So I always kind of keep an, an eye on that bowl. And if I lose that bowl, you know, anywhere, and I kind of lost it a little bit here, I'll just take some color and push that bowl back in. You've always got to have that, that bowl. It's the bowl that gives it the look of the rose here. So you've got to have that. You can't lose that. 
let's just pull some of that back in some of this light right back in there like that and yes I go back and forth working on them I'll go work on one go work on another change it up and uh, I like that I like to move back and forth between the flowers let's one of them tack up a bit and and uh, go a little bit lighter as you go lighter that color gets softer you notice that that's because white's a toner and a lot of people always just think they keep adding white making it lighter and then they wonder why it dies down and that's because white lightens it it adds the contrast of value but it's a toner it actually is a bad thing to do sometimes so I'll make that nice soft little one there. Now, if I want even a more of a rose to it, I'm going to take this orange burnt sienna kind of color here. And I'm just going to twirl this around the center here just a bit. And see, that gives it its rose look. Here, and I'll just push in to soften that just a bit. And that gives it more of its rose look. Let's take this and drop some of that in on the low side of the bowl boom just like you know what you're doing see this the rose is created more from that center the look of that center here than anything else um, that um, center let's drop a little brighter yellow right in there that center turning around this little guy turning around there creates that look, that little, uh, you know, hurricane look there of the rose. Now let's take some of this here. That's a bit bright. Strike through that a bit. There. And we'll add a touch of the light there just a bit. Here, model some of this movement up. Here, so we have a bit of that movement. Just a chisel like this to suggest another petal through here. A little bit of sienna, I mean, yellow oxide into that. Doesn't need to be too much. A bit of this around the back here. What is it that makes it a rose? That center. We'll take a bit of the burnt sienna and red. Maybe even a touch of darulite. Makes it a bit different. Here. Add some more yellow. That red got a bit heavy there. Best yellow to take it out with. Let's go reach back to your color theory is yellow oxide. It's the easiest. The others won't take it out quite as easy. Let's take some of that. Push that down this side just a bit more. Open up the front of this one a bit more. A little bit different look to it there. There we go. And this one as well. There. Yeah, just give the idea of uh, some petals, just a little chisel of the petals there. Like that. I changed this direction because it looked like two little wings coming in there. So I just make this one a bit bigger. Let's make it a bit lighter. Pull in that way. Make sure you see the bowl and you're fine. Let's put a couple of light petals around the back side here. Twirling around maybe a bit. And that's good. And we'll get even now more simplistic as we come back here. We're just going to uh, really kind of just smear some color around here. Maybe uh, an edge of a petal you can push on the side closest to the bird there. Like that. Okay. Maybe one that looks like it's going to go back behind the bird. Okay, so that it doesn't stop at a tangent line at the bird. And we'll swirl around. And see how 
that swirling around starts to make it look like a rose. We'll go with some soft color, just boom, right here. Just like that. And it starts to look like a rose. Rose buds, even easier yet. Take some color here, we put that shadow on. And we just wanna keep it moving mostly to an oval shape here. And maybe open up a petal here. Maybe a bit of that shadow up to the top up there, but the rosebuds are more of a, just an oval shape. And, uh, you know, and they have all different kinds of like little red touches in them and stuff like that. So red and burnt sienna. And again, that burnt sienna is kind of important because that's just the colors of the chaffinch here. See, picking up those colors, the yellows, the reds. That's what I'm thinking. That's my plan. Let's take some yellow oxide, some of these reds and stuff, and make a more toned version of the flowers out here. A little more red and burnt sienna here. Push that in and through so we get some more of those colors out here. You could use those even negative pink colors out here. We're going to go to some greens, but see, that just pulls those colors down. I like that. Boom, let's just put in a touch of those colors right in there. That's nice. Take some yellow oxide. We don't want this to get too bright out here, so paint most of these with the yellow oxide as you get further out. Here. So maybe that's a nice soft one there. A little bit more of an edge. Maybe a bit of a turned up front petal there. But it doesn't need to be too much because the main flowers are done. You know, um, one of the, the things that I always tell my students is that the outside flowers out here, boy, just, you know, mostly just give them that nice turn. That's really what they need here. They don't need a whole bunch of stuff out there because that just competes against your other flowers. So just give it a nice little turn and get out. And uh, just create some more movement out here as you get to that. Maybe some other colors or some other roses or something's going on out there. Here. You know, and, and again, we'll We'll push a little bit here. We'll just push some of this around. What's going to make that a rose? The turn, the little inside. So we model that color up and then turn it like that and all of a sudden you have a soft little rose. Just like you know what you're doing. Okay, so those are pretty soft. Those are, are nice looking actually with that bird. Let's get into some of these yellows. Yellow greens, a little bit of that red in with that. Here, first let's actually go with the darker. Follow your premier coup here, Dave. Go with the darker, pine green, burnt sienna, that's your contrast green. We'll use that, see how it starts to break away some of those uh, other colors. Make sure we have a bit of that around here so he has, looks like something he could stand on. Matter of fact, you might even drop a stem or so through, right out like that, further out. Here, oh, a little bit. I like that kind of look with him. I do like that. Soften this out as we go back here. Change your colors, constantly change your colors. Add some of this orange to it. Bit of extender here to thin it out. But see that orange makes a nice soft color that looks really nice out there, you know, on him. And uh, out here, just grab some of that. It is 
strategic smearing with the paper towel. <laughs> you, you, it's, I used to be just so worried doing that. Now I do it so fast and it looks pretty good. You know, it uh, doesn't always come out exactly like I wanted it to, but that's okay. It looks pretty good. And no one notices it. So, yeah, let's, let's use some of this green out here. Let's use just a touch more contrast right there. That really is going to pop this one forward more than anything else. A bit of that green right up next to that orange, that burnt sienna. That's kind of nice. There's a bit of that coming down there. I need to have a, some more yellow or something right down in here. Got some green in my brush. Kill it with a little burnt sienna. Here. Some other kind of flowery shape right in here, I think. Right in there. Kind of fills it up a bit more. Let's get just a touch of that orange. Here. Just like this. So I'm just I'm looking at the colors and the shapes, you know, and carrying it down. And uh, that's what that's what I'm deciding. We'll push. We can have a little light. We just don't want too bright out there on this one. There we go. Just a bit of that right there. Now, what's going to uh, make that the rose? We'll take a real soft, put a little green into that too. Real soft, little turn. Inside, turning around, turning around. A little bit to the bowl shadow there, like that. That's pretty good. There, we'll get some of these nice greens out here. Pulling down and through. Sometimes a nice streak of one is pretty. This helps. And you can streak, uh, you know, very impressionistic, would streak some other color, some of the colors of the composition out here like that as well. And drop your brush. So you pull those colors of that composition out there. You know, I like that. Pull some of that around. Not so bad, you know, this rose could go a little bit more light as it's dried down. Let's put a bit of Hansa. Let's be brave here and push just a bit more. Now, why reason why I do that is that allows me to add more. Not only does it focus you in towards that chaffinch a little bit more, but it allows me to... Uh, Focus in uh, a bit more light on outside areas if I want, if I need. Right now I don't feel I need to, but I do like that rose having just a bit more of a pow to it. There, like that. A bit more of a light right up to the front. Maybe an edge like that. That's kind of nice. So it does allow me to do more here. Not that it's really needed. This is a high contrast. It's not really, really needed. I'm putting just a bit of yellow with that. I'm going to add just a touch or two here. Right out there like that. Not that he really needs a bunch of stuff. But boy, that's a nice bright color those yellow knockouts boy they are they are a bright little rose boy but I think they're pretty with this and different and we'll add a few light little petals here that one's just opening up this one could have a tiny bit of a a turn here Maybe right there, just the idea of one right there. 
let's uh, finish this going. Let's push in a, a, a stem, a little calyx here. There, like that. Um, maybe uh, a stem, a stem or two line continuing on up. Keeps that movement going up. Um, softer leaf or two going up. You can do more of a, you know, more of a set leaf shape if you wanted to. You know, more defined leaves. Now, so you can, you know, out to here, usually to the outside areas or something like that. I'll I'll put a few of them, more defined shapes. Otherwise, I just let the impressionist color come through. Um, you know, I'll let some of this impressionism right out through here. Go right out through there. Now I like that. And uh, now I'm going to come back in and, and restate some of that violet from the originally of the painting. That sapphire the light, a little bit of, of uh, let's go a bit more sapphire. And the light color here, I'm gonna push just a bit of extender. I'm gonna use my bigger brush here. And when I start to feel that, you know, eh, color starts to get a little heavy right out through here. This is where I like to get brave. This is also very dangerous. Boy, you know, I just so, <laughs> I, every time I do this, I think back to, um, uh, one of my favorite students when I did this on her painting, I walked up and I said, ah, you're too heavy with color there. We've got to lighten this up. And I took this brush, big brush with blue and just went pshoom like that across the front of, uh, across the roses and everything. And uh, said, okay, that's fine. Without softening it out. And she about died. She was like, you've lost your mind. But I do enjoy having that fun. I softened it out. But I just took a big brush and just went boom like that right across the whole thing. And she, I said, boy, that's perfect. It's nice. And she pop died. Oh, you soften it out. You soften that movement out. And that's where you get that lovely movement through. I like that. That's that in very popular impressionistic movements of color, you know, now that are very popular today. You know, and this will push back that other one there. See, just a bit. See? And, uh, <laughs> but it's uh, why I teach they have fun with uh, students and friends and uh, you know that's uh, I like to have fun it's frustrating what we do guys like I say to you many times I've talked to you through about the frustration of it. there's a lot of frustration in what we do but you gotta have some fun too so we'll soften that out blur that in gets that nice that nice lighter feeling to it push that back back here focuses it in see it starts to focus in a bit more on the bird as well we can push some of that back through here see i like that Boom, right down through there sometimes i won't soften it out here but, uh, i just push that through there a little extender so it slides it's nice. Grab some of that nice color. Push that so that little chafe inch really comes forward there. You know, get rid of t some streaks that are right by his his beak there. And just push that in just a bit. Softens and blurs those edges here. And the... Uh, Art of Painting Birds class, the, the online class, I always say you go back and revisit that head just that last time. And um, and I see on him there, he's, his uh, neck could be out just a touch more. I'm going to use just a touch of red. But see, I like that. See how it softens that all out? And that's... Uh, It is a bright little painting like that. But you know what? I'm a big advocate of painting all the looks. 
because especially since you use your looks, if you know, if you're if you're starting and, and some of you are writing me and commenting me, how do you start your careers and stuff? The you know, you have to paint if you really want to be um you know, professional artist, you gotta paint a whole bunch of different looks. Things that you don't like. If you don't ever paint you don't always paint stuff you like. You paint a lot of things you don't like. Um and you set those all up and you may do commission work with that kind of stuff because people are different. I mean, I'm just gonna push a little shadow there and bring that shoulder back up and uh, set this neck feathers up on top of that. That's a little bit more interest to him right there. I like that. Now that's kind of a kind of a, a nice uh, set of colors. I wonder if I could uh, step that back just a bit more here. We'll get the there we go, we go. Get the there we go. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, with um, with the virus and everything that runs around, you know, normally we have lots of people into the studio. Well, it's just me here now, so I've got to run all of the cameras, and there's multiple cameras that we have running when we do bigger class videos. We have lots of cameras and stuff running, and then that's all got to get edited all together and everything like that, but then I have now, you know, sometimes we have other people in here running, and but it's me here, so I got all these controllers. Which one is controlling what camera? Set back a little bit here so we can see a little bit more of the painting. <laughs> it's um, it's kind of fun. It's, that's what we do. Someday this will all be done. We'll all get through this, you know, and um, it's uh, we just got to all hang in there, guys. It's Just stay inside and, and stay safe and paint. Have a good time and paint. And we'll be here giving you all kinds of good stuff to do this. I'm going to push a bit more of an edge right here. Right on that edge there. Not too much. But uh, that will allow me to just push a soft little bit more right here. Just so that's fading out. I want that to fade out. But maybe the front edges of it a bit more of a line. So it comes forward just a touch more. And um, yeah. That works. Kind of swirl in here and fill in and let the, but don't don't make it perfect. Like see that swirling in there makes it feel like that rose is a bit bigger. Um, I've got a stop line right there that's on that rose that I'll soften out here, and uh, so that just push just a bit there. And those two petals are out exactly the same. So let's take this one out a little bit more here, up to that side. Push, I love the softness of that, pushing that color. Pushing that color so I don't get that stroke. And I get that softness there, like that. Anyway, that works. That works pretty good, okay? So there's a chafe inch, and I know we have Scarlet uh, Tanager and a bunch of other ones. We wanted to do another hummingbird, and you know, and you're sending me some really nice, um, some really nice ideas. But um, Judy, there's your chaffinch, okay? And uh, we'll uh, have that other one there to look at too. I don't know whether that's in a book. I can't remember if that's in a book or if it's in a DVD or whatever. But all kinds of. Them. And then I have another chaffinch that I did that's and she's part of a landscape, female chase fish looking out over a, over a landscape. And that, that one was a lot of fun to paint. There's a lot of different ways. You know, I'm setting the birds here with the challenge into flowers and stuff for you. Because a lot of people like flowers. And these make just lovely sets. Like if you're going to go do an art show or stuff, put them out into the sets and you set them up there. You'll sell two, three of them at a time. So let's see some of these together. Especially if you do like uh, match pairs and stuff, There's a, those are always work really well. Um, but uh, you can also put the birds in other situations too. You know, like like I did with the landscapes, and uh, like I did uh, one in um, one of my first bird books, uh, Northern Shrike, that I took out at the farm out here. Took a picture of him, and 
Here's a northern shrike sitting on top of a little pine tree. So there's the little pine needles and stuff. Great little painting. It doesn't have the flowers. It just sits out in nature a little bit more. So you can do those, um, you know. But the ones that I do with flowers like this, they uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of interest in them. So I hope you enjoy them. So anyway, we'll continue on. We'll do uh, another one. I was thinking about. I had a photo of a little tree sparrow, and she she is really sweet. Uh, and that might be nice to do with some little tiny. Um, blossoms like maybe some crab apple or something like that little blossoms and stuff so we'll maybe look at that one and then get back to some of the bright ones and stuff too okay all right i'll see you guys uh, on the next one oh please hit like and please comment down there because that helps the videos you know that that helps the videos we really appreciate it and like always if there's something you want to see you want to do that and i have not forgotten about those of you that wanted to see glass and some of those other things i haven't forgotten about those i just wanted to get some of this challenge out of the way and then we'll get those and i have another rose correction video coming up with about using too much paint uh, which I had a student that was using too much paint and I forgot about that too so I want to show you that and it corrects the rose really nice okay we have a lot of stuff to show you all right guys I'll see you guys on the next one thanks a lot